Welcome to the AVL Smart Mobile Solutions Newsflash with today's special on electrification. My name is Marijn and I'm here together with my colleague Nadia. Hello Marijn, hello all. I hope you are doing all well, staying safely at home. Today we have prepared some topics for you. So first of all, we will talk about the challenges we have identified in the field of electrification. Uh, afterwards, we will go into our solution and how we can tackle these challenges. And then we will address a tricky point. So how the engineers can reuse the data in the office. Furthermore, uh, we will talk about one more point. So how we can duplicate and convert the real measurements uh, in another testing environment. And at the end, we will give you a short taste of what is next, what is upcoming. So first topic, we have identified a lot of challenges in the field of electrification validation. Initially, there is a lot of testing done uh, in the field of functional testing. So the engineers need to perform around 2000 tests uh, for uh, testing of nominal functions and around 1,800 tests for functional safety, so testing of safety functions in the vehicle. We should also not forget the tests that have been uh, done for durability and for overnight battery charging tests, um, which is also a lot. And all these tests are currently done uh, via big Excel lists. They are documented and maintained there and it's really hard to reuse them. On top of that, um, the engineers uh, could not have also direct evaluation of the tests. So the question is, what can we do in order to help the engineers to focus on their real work, which is actually the testing? Mariah? Now to support so many tests, we have to make sure that they're measured efficient and first time right. We support this with the maneuver assistance. Once all these ex Maneuvers from Excel list or Word documents are converted into a maneuver library. This is a one-time job and I'll show afterwards how that is done. Each engineer can select from that maneuver assistance a test he wants to run. For instance, a gear shift test. We can add the test, go to the next step. The maneuvers are set up with generic names like the oil temperature or engine speed in this example. Um, you have to add, depending on with which control unit that you are connected, you have to add uh, um, uh, the right gen channel from the CAN or from the uh, control unit. You go to the next step and you start your maneuvers. And during that, start in park position for five seconds. the driver gets guided in what to do. It's online evaluated. The stabilization time is taken in account. Shift gear to reverse position for five seconds. And it's not only a playlist, it's also really checking if each channel is done Shift correctly. Shift gear to neutral position for five seconds. Shift gear to drive position for five seconds. Shift gear to tip position for five seconds. Shift. Yes, I turn off the voice. But you get the idea. So it's the driver is guided. There's online evaluation. You can show KPIs. The driver can control to it. It has to fulfill certain criteria, etc. And once you don't fulfill those criteria, you can also select what to do. So either go to a step back, uh, go to another step, etc. I think you get the idea. So I will pause here. Once the test is finished, you automatically get a result tab. And in this result tab, you get a direct overview of everything that is what's happened. So all the steps you have measured. So you see here, these were the steps we all planned. Uh, with the green checkbox, this means the test is run successfully within the criteria, so within the tolerance band. Here you can see at this step, I aborted the test. 
Here is a short overview where you see the most important uh, data which was needed for the for the maneuver setup. And then you can if, uh, do a quick evaluation. So with the blue lines, you see the step when I click through the steps, etc. So for most functional testing, this is the most important information because you want to know if the test was uh, run correctly. If so, basically the test is done. But we can also do more uh, more evaluation. So we have an automatic reporting function. So we can export the report to a PDF or to a uh, PowerPoint directly. So let's export to PowerPoint. So we can say this is for the for the news flash. We save it. The reporting is generated and the reporting, um, the type of reporting that is made is co can be customized um, depending on the on customer demands, what you would like to see. Um, and you get directly the PowerPoint and this PowerPoint can then be sent to uh, your colleagues or, or uh, to the customer to show as a reporting, okay, the tests are completed. Okay, so far, so we had the preparation in the office, we can select the test, you get guided in the vehicle, everything gets recorded, automatic um, reporting in the end. So the whole stream is, is guided. Now, how are these tests set up? So for that, we have our, the maneuver editor. We again select the test we had for the demonstration. And you can see that each test, so this is the gear shift test we were doing, is set up by building blocks. And these building blocks, you can select several blocks. So we have a block for, for a steady state submaneuver. We have a block for a transient when you want to have a certain ramp, etc. There's a confirm submaneuver. Um, so it opens a pop-up where you either have to confirm something. Um, if the climate control switches on climate control, you have to push in OK. Or you can have to enter something during the test execution. You have to enter a certain number or what whatever. There's a set variable in there which you can use for for certain um, inputs or when you want to have loopings etc there's also a calibration chain step so if you want to include certain changes in the control unit or on con you can use this and there's a wait step so based on these steps you can set up and then for each step you have to configure which channels do i have to satisfy to satisfy this step, what do I want to evaluate? If you want to evaluate certain KPIs, when is the step violated? What do I want to monitor? And with, on which cases do I want to skip the test? And of course, on the side, you can type in the audio instructions. Now, there are many, many more settings you can use for the input, but these are just give you a rough idea. And of course, you don't have to do this for all the tests. So there are also smart ways to do if you do a certain test at 10 kilometers per hour and you have to repeat this at 20, 30, 40. Um, you can set it up in, in the parameter tab where you can make lists of, of the tests you want to run. So you don't have to set up the parameters for every, every single test you want to run. So this is how the maneuvers are set up. So in this case, we can support all the functional testing. We all already have the drive maneuvers as a library available. And we can also do things like, like uh, overnight charging tests. So we can support with the maneuver assistance, the overnight charging, also the timeout of the con uh, when the control unit during the charge get off. Um, we have extended timeouts. So we inform the user that the control unit is off, but we keep recording. And this is an additional benefit because we have the whole overnight charging in one recorder file. And at the end, we have automatic reporting. So far, the how we can support the in-vehicle testing for electrification. Now back to you, Nadia. That looks like a great help.
but how the engineer can reuse the data afterwards. So how can they know what has happened with the data? So when you want to know what happened during the measurement data, key is to have the right metadata in the measurement. So for this, we have our data storage window, which supports you with generating um, a name convention, but also to add attributes like customer, project, which vehicle variant, etc. But this can be put in manually, but also imported from third party products. But this is not the only thing which is needed. Imagine a colleague goes to the, to the vehicle to, to make a test and make calibration changes stores the measurement data on the server but how do the other engineers know what happened during that test which calibration change did the engineer make at that time in the vehicle so you can't depend here on manual typed commands etc you also don't know this from the data set because the data set is basically a snapshot from from the control unit status so for this we support with smart mobile solutions. So let's say we go to the vehicle and we start recording and we make some calibration adaptions. So let's say this area we want to put in, put it to one. Here we want to put 0.5. Okay, we also want to change um, this map. And we want to make some, some changes here 0 0.3 and at the end we want to make some steps here in the value oops like that um, this was just the trial so let's say before we go back we reset all the values reset the complete map also here reset the complete map and restore the measurement file like this in the data set you won't see any changes but changes were made while while recording but in the background while making this test with smart mobile solutions we have recorded all the changes so when we select the measurement file, display in this window, you see we have an overview of all the attributes we typed in, but this was, was manual input data. We also have automatically an overview of all the channels that have been changed and when they have been changed. So when we select the first map, we see at the blue um, lines when the change was made Below we see also the status of the time. So when we go over with the cursor, we see, aha, that was the first change. That was the second change. And we had to reset to the, to the last value. The same for the, for the value or for a curve. So we see exactly at what time, which setting was changed. The additional thing is we can even see at where the load point was in the map. So this is a key enabler. So this is automatic metadata generation. So we know exactly which change has been made in the data set at which point. And this enables that engineers can have all the information available to reuse the measurement data. Right, but what can we do in order to convert such a measurement so that we can duplicate it in another testing environment? For example, chassis dyno, testbed or in simulation. To be able to convert a measurement from the road to another environment, to use it and to duplicate it or to do further development, there are quite some challenges. So the road gradient comes from the GPS data. And while measuring the GPS data, there's measurement noise, there's the GPS accuracy, there are the stopping points which don't match and is often a sample rate problem. Also, there are measurement flaws or loss of GPS signals, for instance, when you go through a tunnel. This is one part, but also the time synchronization versus the vehicle velocity. So whenever you would drive up a hill, you'd expect the vehicle speed goes down. When the road gets flat, vehicle speed goes up again. 
If there's a noise on the measurement signal from the uh, vehicle speed or from the GPS signal, this gets filtered out, which means that there might be a time delay. This would mean if you don't uh, correct this, you would go up the hill, the vehicle speed would stay constant and when you get flat, of course this results in a wrong duplication of the measurement. So to be able to to come over this, we have our road converter. So basically you can select a uh, measurement file. Um, we take here a rural hill, it's just an example file. You select the right signals. You also have to do this for the environment conditions, so the longitude, latitude, the altitude. You can also have the possibility to crop the data, do some cropping, but also to add additional data, merge two files. And then there are additional settings for, for uh, filtering the road data. So there are some default settings which, which are um, provided based on experience. Plus there's the correction on the map data. So there's an API with here for the correcting of the data. Yes, in case there is a gearbox, you can add the amount of gears. Um, add a different additional vehicle configurations, tire, tire axle geometry, the road load parameters, and you also can add the uh, ambient, so the wind speed, etc. And you can add the configuration settings. So in this case, just a simple example, uh, vehicle speed. Based on this, you can generate a test run and all the corrections are done automatically in the background. Once the test is generated, there's an automatic summary here where you can um, look, validate the data generated. You can look at the different speed signals and the time alignments. You see the route, the altitude, some shares of the road and the driving profile, vehicle profile, engine profile, if in case applicable, and the phase uh, configurations, which in, in case you need it. And afterwards you can export the data can see it's exporting the SSQ file now. And if we go back to the main folder, look at the export, and there is our generated SSQ file which can be used in the testbed, on chassis dyno, or in the simulation. So now, coming to an end, let's see what's next, what's upcoming. We are working on a solution for defining testing targets for electrical range calculation of an electrified vehicle. So under different altitude, different uh, driving behavior, different uh, traffic conditions, different climate conditions and so on, you can still then define virtual tests that you can do in simulation and testbed applications for calculation of e-range uh, sensitivity and durability. Really nice. And don't forget uh, our upcoming smart mobile solution newsflash, which will be special on others. Stay tuned. Thank you very much. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you guys. Stay home, but stay connected. Bye.